Evolution of everything. The evolution of Pennywise. Pennywise has fed on our fear for generations. But just how has he evolved to come on now? Come on now. <laughs> Torchy. Yeah, I probably don't sound nothing like him. The decades. Let's go through his ever altering forms to find What's out. What's with the red balloon? Why the Pennywise red balloon? first appears in the It miniseries. He wears a yellow suit with green and purple accents and three pom -poms. Oh, before he goes any further. I know. I know this. I know the movie. The movie, the old movie, he was even creepier. Okay, the old movies got me real messed up. I seen it a long time ago, but I ain't watching it again. The newer one, that one's creepy too, but they're both scary. Forget it. Palms down the front. He's caked with pale makeup, has a large forehead, round nose, and puffy red hair. He also occasionally reveals vicious, sharp teeth and alien-like uh. hands. In addition oh. to his clown form, he transforms into several citizens of the town dairy. And no whoa, 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 who was that, Georgie? In addition to his clown form, he transforms into several Captain citizens Hanscom of the town dairy. Georgie Dinbro. Oh! Dairy. And notably, a swampy skeleton, a creepy mummy, and a werewolf to spook his prey. But wow. he's warded off when sprayed with an inhaler and hit what? with an earring, squeezing down a drain to escape. But 30 years okay, later, okay, first of all, and hit with an earring. Look, look at his little growl there. There's no way that's what he does. Why is there a hole in his head? What the heck? This clown is weird, man. Squeezing down a drain to escape. Oh, she but shot. She used the. She used a slingshot. When sprayed with an inhaler, shoot him a rock in his an head. Earring, squeezing oh. down a drain to escape. But 30 years later, Pennywise is all healed up and adds more dairy personas to his repertoire. These transformations also include an old. Ah! What would you do if you went to go kiss your girlfriend and then it, it transformed into a, an evil dancing clown? Ah, oh. and then you see its teeth. It's all super yellow. A lady oh. that rots, a blue zombified bully, a Rottweiler clown. What the? Stands head in the fridge and even a plate of freaky fortune cookies. Eventually, he reveals a giant spider. I seen the new movie and I seen this thing. This thing is huge, giant and scary and it's not okay. It's not okay at all. What is that? Form with a glowing belly. But he's once again hit with an earring, then pushed over, and has his heart torn out. Did he say hit with it? But he's once again hit with an earring. A, and a what? A, an earring? An earring. Like that goes in your ear? I, I don't remember that part. Actually, he reveals a giant spider form with a glowing belly. But he's once again hit with an earring, then pushed over, and has his an heart earring. torn out. The Indian. T that is disgusting. How'd they know that was its heart? And see, that's the kids grown up. Because that's what they had to do TV a lot series. years later. Here's a new Pennywise. This one is shorter, wears a pink tuxedo with puffy shoes, and a bald cap with tough suborn chair. He also wears a multi-patterned out- That Pennywise looks weird. That is that is not Pennywise. That is what is that? I don't know what that is. With triangular green frills, and his makeup is constantly changing. This clown has the same hunger for kids what? and similar shape-shifting abilities, including a strange fuzzy silhouette manifestation. Despite being defeated what twice the? when he's hit with a magical stone, seven years later he re-emerges in a young child's body and ultimately oh. reveals his original human form. He explains that a girl he once loved mocked his height. So he became a clown. And Who is this we're talking about? Is this is it the Pennywise clown? But what version is this? Because this version is weird. And took his own life, causing him to trans- Whoa, what does that say? W-O-H, the Joker Pennywise. The Joker. Short person. <laughs> Short person. Turned clown. Yeah, the show lasted for 52 episodes and we watched every single one for the four minute animation. Wait, what? Wow, this person puts it's Easter eggs. An evil ghost clown. However, his mother forces him to apologize, turning him into a glowing leaf that ascends into the sky. What? Back in America, another Pennywise appears. He's taller. So this Pennywise we're seeing on the screen right here, this is what the old one looked like that's about to transform into the new one because that's not, you can see the face. It doesn't have the red that goes around to the eyes and stuff. And, and then the teeth look older, the outfit looks older. Watch, it's about to transform because it said 2017. Has a lighter outfit with- There it is. It's getting closer. It's getting closer to the one that we all know. Puppy shoulders, a tight waistline, pantaloons, and uh -huh. laced boots. His forehead is huge with quaffed orange hair. Oh, that's like it. And then the makeup on the face. Hair, a smaller nose, red lines up his face, and a lazy eye. Oh my gosh. Hold on, let's go back a second. With quaffed orange hair, a smaller nose, red lines up his face. That's weird. Okay, that one I don't like. And a lazy eye. I don't like that one either. Additionally, he shows off his sharp teeth and unhinging jaw. Ah!
Gosh, that is disturbing. Look at all those teeth, man. How many teeth do you think's in Pennywise's mouth? Comment down below. A million billion or something? He can also conjure burned arms, werewolf hands, spider limbs, and a mummy head. Once again, he transforms into dairy residents, as well as a headless bird. Oh my god. And I remember the scene from the movie. Look at the head. woman. Once again, he transforms into dairy residents. As and well then as that. Headless oh, victim, that. An elongated painted lady. A likeless upper body. You know what I was just thinking? The person that makes these animations has to draw each one of these characters. That is amazing. Wow. Big shout out to Tell It Animated. So good. Body, Eddie popping out of a mattress. A horde of the undead. And a creepy leper. His targets wow. ultimately beat him up. So he sneaks <laughs> down a sewer while his head floats apart. <laughs> oh my god. Taking place 27 years later, in chapter 2, Pennywise is healed and hungrier than ever. His waistline and pantaloons are hungrier than ever. Let's go look later, at that menu. In chapter 2, Pennywise is healed and hungrier than ever. What is that menu? Hold on. Dairy, dairy menu. Is that like the city or something? Breakfast. Beaver guy. Enjoy a quick, easy feast. Already tenderized by local... What? Lunch. Birth birthmark girl. Why can't they use, like, the names? Okay. Uh, these are just, like, a bunch of crap now. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be, like, real names or something. Never. His waistline and pantaloons are lower, and overall, he appears more weathered. This time, he transforms into another bowl of creepy fortune cookies. Oh, what the heck? No, no, no. That... See, I seen the movie, Chapter 2. They were all at a table with fortune cookies. They ate he them and... more weathered. This time, brought him back. he transforms into another bowl of creepy fortune uh, cookies. Floating heads in the fish tank. Uh, an old lady turned giant witch. An undead bully. I think I seen the creepy Floating old lady in the, in the movie. Tank. I think I remember an that. An old lady turned giant witch. Yes! An undead bully. My God. A demonic Beverly and a creepy Bill. A spider stand hybrid. A pack of tormentors. A cute Pomeranian turned twisted demon hound. Oh my gosh, see, there was a lot of things in Chapter 2 of Pennywise that I didn't catch because it was in the background and it would have been very easy to miss. It was like Easter eggs and I, I've seen videos where they point out where Pennywise is in every scene and I'm just like, whoa, I didn't see that ever. The rest of Chapter 1's upper body, a giant Paul Bunyan statue and a batch of zombie kid arms. Plus, what? a more human looking Pennywise appears in addition Oh, I remember this. This that's is freaky. It was at the end arms. of the movie. Plus, a more human-looking... Oh, that's so weird. Pennywise appears, in addition to his original floating dead uh -uh. light form. In the vision, he's oh also God. seen transforming into a bird that turns into a monster. Finally, a heck? giant spider penny is revealed. Oh, but that? Okay, so when I, when I seen that one earlier, I thought that's what it was. But I remember it was like Pennywise in the spider form. Like, that is... Uh, that is creepy, man. And then he like he's told that up. He's small, which deflates him to a pancake Ugh. and allows his heart to be easily snuffed out by the power of friendship. Y'all think Pennywise is dead? Or do you think he's gonna come back for a chapter three? The evolution of Godzilla. Here we go, baby. And this is all the comments of his fans asking him to Since being awoken by atomic you know. bombs, Godzilla has lit up the silver screen. Ooh, look at that face. But his looks seem to be ever changing. Oh, that's that's a joke on the left. What is that? That looks like a lizard, but maybe Godzilla is a lizard. Changing. Never mind. Starting with the original. That's Let's go through his theatrical looks and story. Animated. The evolution In his first ever appearance, of Godzilla! Godzilla has small arms, thick legs, and dorsal plates down his spine. His pupils are tiny, and he has fangs and pointy ears. That's embarrassing. After attacking Japan, he gets disintegrated to bone. A new gigantic, oh, whoops, I mean Godzilla, appears in Godzilla Raids again. This monster is thinner, with longer arms, a smaller head, and larger pupils. When in close-ups, his teeth appear to be jutting out. Sadly, he's buried in ice. But in King Kong vs. Godzilla, he busts free. He's now in color, is more plump, toeless. Godzilla vs. King Kong is started a very long time ago. I didn't know that. He has a lizard-like head with Ew. yellow eyes, no ears, and no fangs. He faces off against a giant ape, tumbling into the ocean. Only to be Mars washed ashore problems. in Mothra vs. Godzilla. Now he's slimmer, has a whiter head, white eyes, and smooth, shiny brows. As his rampage continues, he gets covered in silk and again drops into the sea. But in Ghidorah, Ooh. the three-headed monster, he's back. Now with a slimmer face and longer tongue. God, Godzilla always looked very weird and not good, in my opinion. From this film on in the original series, Godzilla now defends humanity from more evil monsters. 
In Invasion of Astro Monster, Godzilla is thinner, his dorsal plates have more definition, his claws are dull, getting better. and his head oh. is rounder. He shows off his new dance moves before briefly being put under alien mind control. Dance moves! Ibra, Horror of the Deep, gives Godzilla less angry brows. Godzilla he does battles not against have a big lobster and narrowly escapes an exploding. Godzilla don't have dance moves. That is not what Godzilla does. Back in the day, Godzilla 1965, I don't know what they were doing, but they weren't doing something right. Island. In the sequel, Godzilla's neck is elongated, he's pudgier, and his dorsal fins are flimsy looking. His nose is also stubbier, and his eyes are bugged out. Oh, and Whoa. he's now raising a hideous son. <clears throat> in Destroy All Monsters, he's slimmer, while his face appears more like it did in Astro Monster. He's put under alien mind control again, but once free of their control, he turns on them. Oh. For the next three sequels, his look remains consistent. In the first, he uh. helps his son- It does not look scary at all. It looks horrible, actually, but this is like 1960. Face off against a bully. What the However, heck is this that? this all takes place inside the dreams of a young boy. So, moving on. Next, in Godzilla vs. Hedora, he opposes a pollution monster, and when curled up like a shrimp, he can now fly backwards. In Godzilla vs. Gigan, Godzilla has gained the ability to speak, while his suit, uh, oops, I mean skin, starts ripping during his triumphant suit. battle. He appears slimmer in Godzilla vs. Megalon, with a shorter neck, soft, bright dorsal fins. Suit! Fans. He had a suit! What do you mean a suit? That don't even... And a round, pig-nosed face. He boasts a long-distance dropkick, but this movie uh. is mostly about a size-changing <laughs> robot. So, let's keep going. In the next two films, Godzilla has an angrier expression and more detailed oh, yeah. muscle. He uses a magnetic upgrade to protect an ancient god from Mecha Godzilla. And in the sequel, faces him once more. But this timeline, Godzilla is sent to retirement. Retirement. Nine years. There has been so much Godzilla. Oh my gosh. Later, a Where we Godzilla at? appears. This. Now this is the best looking Godzilla that I've seen. This is 1984. Once taller, has larger dorsal fins. Definitely a lot better. And his fangs and ears make a return. Although his reign is short-lived as he trips into a volcano. Only to explode out in the sequel. He has a smaller head. To make Thermo Godzilla, right? And a more muscular build. Larger outer fins and a... Did Godzilla just drink some protein powder? Cat-like face with a secondary row of teeth. He takes on a giant plant monster who gets turned into glitter. In Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, his original form, the godzilla -saurus. What is that? Godzilla Saurus? What the heck is that? That's embarrassing. Is taken out of the 1940s and exposed to modern day radiation, turning him into there a taller, we go. muscular, and angrier looking Godzilla. He fights Mecha King Ghidorah and then gets dumped into the ocean. In Godzilla Mecha King Mothra, Ghidorah? He's thinner, his dorsal plates are rearranged, and his neck is more ribbed. His head is flatter, and he has golden eyes. He battles against- This man just pulled out the 007 Nintendo 64 games. Against Mothra and Batra, and once again is plunged into I don't into know the if y'all seen that. he has golden- Look at- What did You see that? Eyes. He battles against Mothra and Batra, and once again is plunged into the ocean and locked in by Mothra's magical powers. But somehow, in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, he's back. He Look at that. He looks like a zombie. Look at his eyes. He has slimmed down shoulders and slimmer legs. He's also raising a blue-toned gonna... baby Godzilla. This time he's defeated when his butt brain is destroyed, but he's easily Ooh. revitalized just moments later. Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla feet. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But he's easily revitalized just moments He's saying a he. He's saying Godzilla is a he. He said he has a son. He was This time he's defeated. He's defeated. He said he. Oh, see, here's the prop. Godzilla's not a he. Godzilla is a girl. Oh, yeah, I know that one. And if I'm for some reason wrong, which I know I ain't, that ain't gonna be too good on my end. Did when his butt brain. Maybe, maybe down the line he changed into a girl or something. That that. In the evolution, right? He is destroyed, but he's easily revitalized just moments later. Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla features the bulkier original with less detailing in the neck and, and just got eyes. big. Godzilla Jr., who is taller and chubbier with a greener color scheme, and a large flying blue crystallized Space Godzilla, who gets Whoa. obliterated. In this timeline's final film, Godzilla is glowing orange and his son now looks more like a hunched version of his father. When the original Big G has a meltdown, his son absorbs the radiation and turns into the new Godzilla ready for action. But the series would be continually rebooted, dropping him altogether. 
The first American Godzilla what? appears as a large mutated iguana with blue dorsal spines and a hanging dewlap. This Godzilla also has hundreds of tiny raptor-looking offspring. But this happy family is easily taken out by basic explosive. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So the original Godzilla died. The son of that Godzilla also died. It got rebooted in America with what looks like a dinosaur. A look at the legs and the arms. What is that? Back in Japan, in Godzilla 2000, he appears shorter. Okay, Godzilla 2000, he keeps saying that he... So, that clearly doesn't mean that Godzilla is a she, so I'm thinking this Godzilla's also gonna die. Because I know Teledanimated is not gonna get it wrong. With green jagged skin, sharp purple spines, and a wow. reptilian looking face. While Whoa. he's nearly swallowed whole, he's good to go for the next reboot. Godzilla vs. Megaguirus, in which he's Megaguirus? lighter, with a longer neck, and smaller mouth. He defeats a giant flying insect and is then sent into a black hole. In Giant Monsters All Out Attack, Godzilla is formed by the ghosts of vengeful World War II victims. He has smooth charcoal colored skin, white dorsal fins, and a hunched neck. His face is less lizard-like, with pure white eyes and no ears. My god, okay, so the first Godzilla, they was evolutionized a lot of times and their first Godzilla died and then the son died, so... If you are Godzilla, you are that, okay? And if you die, there is no more Godzilla. But if he dies, does that make his son Godzilla? And you know how, like, you got a king and a queen. If they die, the daughter's the king and the queen. Or something. You know what I'm saying? Is that how this works? Like, if Godzilla dies, his son is now Godzilla? But this Godzilla is mutilated by a drill missile, leaving only his beating heart behind. Oh. The following reboot, Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla, re-adds the jacket is. design elements and introduces a more wolf-like face. In the climax, he's blasted by a beam, he, adding a visible He said he again, so it's scar still to his chest for the sequel, Tokyo SOS, in which he's covered in silk and again flown into the bottom of the sea. Godzilla Final Wars features a taller, smoother, and more slender Godzilla with longer ears. What is ears going on? Did he just drink Nutella? Red eyes. This Godzilla fights against a multitude of creatures, including an upright standing 98 Zilla. Then he and his hideous son head back to the hideous? ocean. Hideous? In Shin Godzilla, he's first shown as a light colored and armless creature. What is that? Evolved, growing tiny arms and becoming more red with bloody accents. His massive main form is darker with a much longer tail that has okay, a little that, face Okay, that up. thing turned from ew to whoa. Man, his jaw can unhinge and split apart, and he has a variety of handy new skills. He can also apparently oh reproduce gosh. human hybrids from his tail tip, but he's given a freezing agent, ceasing his evolution. The anime trilogy depicts a muscular rounded Godzilla with a tree bark like texture. What is going later, on? He sports beard like spikes and grows to his largest on screen size, easily allowing him to become the ruler of Earth. Meanwhile, back in 2014, a plump American Godzilla appears. This. This is the correct Godzilla. Titan has jagged dorsal plates, wide elephant-like feet, and noticeable gills. He comes out of high- Still saying he. Why is he saying a he? Go stop. Godzilla ain't no he, man. Two hideous star-crossed lovers. In Godzilla, King of the Monsters, he's taller and beefier. His lower half looks less stubby, Whoa. his tail tip is more blunt, and his dorsal fins are less sharp and artfully glowing. Later, he's given extra radiation, and after ashes rain down on him, he gets a fiery new look and Whoa. power upgrade. Helping yeah, him to thermal retain Godzilla, the baby! The evolution of Chucky. Let's get into this. All of his fans showing the Chucky love. Chucky has terrorized toy chests for over 30 years. But just how has he changed Whoa. since his original incarnation? Let's go through his story and evolution to find... Oh, oh, the animations with the blood splatter right there. How has he changed since his original Check out the blood splatter animation. Let's go through his story and evolution oh. to find out. In 1988's Child's Play, when criminal Charles... Who the heck is that? I don't think I've... I think I've seen the 1988 one. Lee Ray, nicknamed Chucky, is shot down. He uses voodoo magic to transfer his soul into a good guy play doll, giving life to the tiny toy sl Oh my gosh, look how innocent. Slasher. He wears a striped shirt, overalls, and red shoes. It seems uh, the longer he spends- Wow, look at that innocent doll right there. Oh, so innocent. <laughs> ...in doll form, the more human looking he becomes. Whoa, 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 whoa. With bushier eyebrows and a receding hairline. To avoid becoming a doll forever, he realizes he needs to transfer his soul into Andy, the first person he revealed his identity to. Before he gets the chance, he's burned in a fireplace and sh- Oh my gosh! I didn't know all of that. I don't I don't think I knew that. Transfer his soul, he was 
Hold on, where did he get his soul from? Was it the first guy? It's voodoo magic to transfer his soul into a good guy play doll. Uh, giving life to the town. Wait, who is child's play? When criminal Charles Lee Ray, nicknamed Chucky, is shot down, he uses voodoo magic to- Charles Lee Ray put his soul inside of the doll. Then I guess that guy doll, the long hair guy, and then the soul from the doll, which is Charles Lee Ray, wanted to become the other kid, but I don't know why, because he wanted to be the doll. Transfer his soul into a good guy play doll, giving life to the tiny toy slasher. Wow. He wears a striped shirt, overalls, and red shoes. It seems the longer he spends in doll form, the more human looking he becomes. Whoa. With bushier eyebrows and a receding hairline. Whoa. To avoid becoming a doll. I did not know this about Chucky. Wow. Maybe I just don't pay attention to movies. Forever, he realizes he needs to transfer his soul into Andy, the first person he revealed his identity to. Before he gets the chance, he's burned oh. in the fireplace and shot to pieces. Oh my gosh, so hold on. How does he come back to life then? How does the, the future Chucky's happen, you know? We're getting into that. Why do both parents have a gun? Relax, calm down. In an effort to prove he was never alive, in Child's Play 2, the doll manufacturers oh. rebuild Chucky from his charred remains with larger facial features and brighter overalls. Oh a freak my. electrical accident brings him back to life. You've got to be kidding me. So wait a second. A freak electrical shock shocked the guy that recreated him after he was created did it shock charles lee ray which is the soul inside of the original chucky or was it the transfer of the soul from the guy that just recreated him he continues his search for andy despite upgrading to it okay it's still charles lee ray because he's looking for andy again the the original creator that died from the electric shock well the guy that put him back together not the original creator he is just dead he, he's gone bye-bye this is still Charles Lee Ray. Knife hand. He's forced into machinery and loses his legs. Still Man. determined, he replaces them with a wheel car and then gets melted by molten plastic and fed in air too. Oh my his gosh! Head. Taking place eight years later, Chucky's leftovers are picked back up in Child's Play 3. But when his blood drips into a batch of molten plastic, he's reassembled oh, and born again. Oh no! Just a few drops of blood was his soul? And that created him again? Come on, man! This time with a chubbier, more squished face. He manages to find Andy, but then chooses a new target for his soul transfer. He's ultimately whoa, sliced by a carnival whoa. attraction, giving him a new two-faced look, and then gets dropped into a giant fan, shredding him to- Chucky's been through a few things, and more than one doll. How in the heck- Pieces. But in Bride of Chucky, he's put back together again and reawoken with voodoo magic. He now But who put him back together? Y'all didn't y'all skip that part. Who put him back together unless he don't even know? Now has a less squished face and a prominent <laughs> widow's peak. Tiff whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa! Tiffany, this girl is gonna That's where Tiffany comes from. Tiffany, his human girlfriend turned doll fiance, joins him in obtaining a magic amulet with the power to transfer them both into new human bodies. What? So how did Tiffany, the human girlfriend, become, like, she fell in love with a doll? And how did she become into the doll? Did they do the same kind of thing? Now they're doing voodoo magic again, but to become normal people. What? But after some domestic bickering, Chucky gets shot and left in his grave. Why did he just stab his, okay, so I've seen some of the movies, but it's been a long time and I forgot everything. Maybe you guys can explain some of it in the comments below. In Seed of Chucky, a new animatronic doll is created for an in-film Chucky movie, alongside his co-star Tiffany. This ah. Chucky has blonder hair and brighter clothes. Their long-lost son-slash-daughter finds them and, using the magic amulet, brings them back to life. Then, following a bit of familial disagreement, Chucky gets lopped to pieces by his offspring. Oh my goodness. I don't remember that. I don't remember. I've seen the new one, but I have not seen. Wait a second. Was the new one Chucky's kid then? What the? No, it wasn't. He just came back. Yet, in Curse of Chucky, My he's back gosh. in one piece yet again. He has darker overalls, paler skin, straightened red hair, and oddly, no more scars. He spends most what? of his- What? Why is there no scars? That don't even make any sense. A lot of things don't make any sense, but I guess he just keeps coming back like Jason Voorhees. Time in a wide-eyed doll form secretly causing havoc for wheelchair-bound Nika and her family. Huh? When she finds out he's alive, Chucky explains that, as a human, he knew her family and came back to get revenge. While Nika gets blamed for Chucky's recent deeds, Chucky makes his way to his old pal Andy's place to finally finish him off. But Andy has other plans. In no way, that's Andy full grown. That, yeah. Imagine being Andy getting chased by 
a doll your whole life. Like, come on, Chucky, relax, dude. Like, can Andy just live his life? Go to somebody else. Cult of Chucky. Chucky is missing a chunk of his head, his body lifts, and chained to a board. Cult oh. also features another Chucky doll with large spaced apart eyes and a thicker neck. A recently buried one-armed variation, a short-haired version, but he doesn't last too long, and what a Chucky-possessed Nika, who takes off with Tiffany, leaving several Chuckies behind to come. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just seen Tiffany in human form carrying her version of doll form. That isn't even possible. Oz Mayhem. In the 2019 reboot, Chucky is now a Caslin AI buddy doll. His overalls are plain, his shirt stripes are thicker, and his head is larger, with gigantic eyes, slicked hair, and a constantly contorting expression. His index finger lights up to connect to other Caslin electronics, and when acting out, his eyes glow bright red. Oh, and he also loves to s That one, okay, see the thing about this one is the freakiest one. I know the other ones have scars, but this one looks the most innocent, and he's just the most craziest. I seen this movie. This one was weird, man. I did not like how Chucky looked at all. Like, the Chucky from the other ones, he had scars all over his face, and I think that one makes the most sense. Same. The film also... <laughs> if you heard that, you are my buddy. Let's hear that again. Oh, and he also loves to sing. The film also briefly yeah. features a blonde, short-haired Buddy 2 doll, a red-headed variation, what? an African-American Buddy, as well as a fuzzy bear version. What? Accessories like a Santa hat, diving helmet, and leprechaun outfit can also be spotted. The original Buddy doll is coded to be evil by a disgruntled factory worker. Later, after imprinting on Andy, he seeks revenge on those that f Andy again. Andy again. It's only an Andy, isn't it? Threaten their relationship. Because that's not Ultimately, original Andy. Chucky is overpowered, beaten to pieces, and melted down. But can you ever truly get rid of a faulty AI? No. Uh, speaking of which, no. this phone has really been glitching a lot. Uh, there we go. That's better. Huh? Huh? <coughs> hey! He died! Tell it animated dad! The evolution of King Kong. I can't get it all out today. Let's get into this. Hey, everybody tell him to King, King Kong. Kong is the most recognizable ape in movie history. But what? just how has he evolved in his near century on film? From the 1930s the? to the modern day, let's take a look at the no, biggest no, 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 near no, no. There's never been a point in time where King Kong was that small. Look at the left. Look, there's a giant King Kong holding. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But just how has he evolved in the near century film? So I was thinking maybe King Kong was normal size at one point or something, which... That wouldn't even make sense, but maybe as King Kong as a baby could have, but no. I seen the Godzilla versus King Kong movie. This could be a spoiler, but I remember when he went onto that planet and it was a different area. He's not even from Earth. Film from the 1930s to the modern day. I don't think. Let's take a look at the Big Ape's evolution. Animated. In his original film, King Kong has constantly shifting fur. 1933. Kong RKO. I have never even heard of that. He's 18 to 24 foot tall. Wait, 14 to 17 All over tons. His body, minus a hairless chest. He has a prominent brow, flared nostrils, and that is, sharp that is teeth. That is not a brow. That is not a brow. That is a big bulge in your a forehead. Chest. He has a prominent brow, flared nostrils, and sharp canine teeth. He also sometimes has a longer face and a more bare chest. And in super close-ups, his face appears whiter with smaller features. He's forced to become a theater attraction. Oh, uh, yeah. See, we all know that. We know about him being forced to become a theater attraction because they captured him. Was like, oh, my God, it's King Kong. And they're all taking pictures. However, I've seen the movie that they did this in, even though it probably didn't start in the movie it's just the story of it but in the movie that they told the story and he was in front of like everybody and he was being held up and uh, on something similar to this but this looks very small compared hey, to that snags his special lady friend only to be shot down from the empire state building in the sequel it's revealed kong had a son he's much smaller huh? has all white fur and a much happier face although to some Hold on. he's much smaller has all white fur and what all white fur King Kong's son? No way. Uh-uh. In a much happier face. Although to save the life of a shady movie producer, this ape sacrifices himself in flooding water. In King what? Kong vs. Godzilla, Kong has reddish fur. With okay, hold on. It says King Kong vs. What is second? There was a King Kong vs. King Kong versus Godzilla 1962. The new one that just came out was Godzilla versus Kong. I didn't call it King Kong versus Godzilla. 
Man, King Kongu, King Kongu, KVG, 148 feet tall, 20,500 metric tons. That is a lot of weight. He's 150 feet tall. patches on each of his packs, prominent cheekbones, thick eyebrows, and is much taller than most iterations My of Kong. My God! He's apparently supercharged by lightning, which he uses to fight a radioactive... What? Nah, King Kong ain't got no lightning abilities! Monster, both tumbling into the ocean. The first animated series features a more quadrupedal standing Kong. Okay, so this may be correct, but I have never seen these King Kongs ever. Like, in the comments below, let me know if you've ever seen a King Kong that looks like this. What is that? The King Kong Show. King Kong, okay, his name is finally normal, but it says KKS on the right. And now he's 50 foot tall and only 100 tons. Long with brown fur and stylish hair. This ape also has a best friend, Bobby, the? with who he goes on adventures. Additionally, this show features the evil... What? What? What year was that? What Twins. year was that? Bobby. Standing Kong. 1966. With brown fur and hair. This ape also has a best friend, Bobby, with who he goes on adventures. Who's Additionally, Bobby? this show features the evil Mechanicon, a robotic Kong oh operated by the dastardly Doctor Who. In <laughs> King Kong Escapes, Kong is less than. A oh my gosh! See, I'm over here reacting to this like like something's wrong, but nothing's wrong. He's telling the evolution of King Kong, and I'm just very lost by it because what I know by King Kong is. It's not any of this. Half the size of his King Kong vs. Godzilla counterpart. His head is bigger, with larger facial features, and he has longer arms and shorter legs. This film also features its own Mechanicong. Oh my gosh, Mechanicong? Are you kidding me? Like Mecha Godzilla, but Mecha Kong? Powerful light bulb eyes and a utility belt full of grenades. Although the second version of him You've lacks the be belt, but does have a hypnotic light on his head to help him fight against the OG Kong. That would be a sick battle. The six remake Kong has dark fur and skin, a small muzzle, look like Zombie Kong, and noticeably human-looking eyes. His face also occasionally looks unrecognizably round. This Kong is creepily attracted to his special lady friend, and when taken off this his is island, a story he is I know. forced to become a mascot for a greedy oil company. But he breaks free, scales the Twin Towers, and is shot down, presumably oh. killing him. But okay, 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 let's go back a little bit because you can see the size of him next to the helicopter. Copters. Scales the Twin Towers and is shot down. That makes sense. Him. But almost. No, almost, because the helicopters were like half his size. And I'm thinking helicopters are like a hundredth of his size or something. In the sequel, it's shown Kong is being kept alive in a coma. This what? film also introduces a more red-furred Lady Kong, who is used to oh, give Kong a no. blood Kong. King Kong gets a girlfriend? You... What? Transfusion, allowing an artificial heart to be placed inside of him. This time, Kong is a little taller, has longer hair, a more pronounced chest, a longer face, and his eyes look less human. He and Lady Kong run off together. Oh no, they gave them an artificial heart, and now they're running off because they're in love. With the military to shoot him down. Again! He passes, he's able to see his just born offspring, Little Kong. The Mighty Kong features another cartoon Kong with a bulging torso, rounded muzzle, and despite the poster sh How do you even have a Mighty Kong? Like, King Kong is already mighty. I'm not mad at Tell It Animated at all. I'm mad at how this is going down. The evolution of King Kong is so weird. Showing him as all brown, this Kong has gray skin and dark fur. Like usual, this Kong falls from the tallest building in New York, but this time he gets to survive wow. this fall. Kong in the animated series features a oh, muscular that Kong build. looks crazy. 2001, that looks like a weird Hulk. 40 foot tall, 80 tons. Longer arms what the? and a tiny head. Although in his final outing, his look would be more streamlined with a larger head. Notably, this Kong can meld minds with his human brother, which boosts his intelligence and allows him to double in. See, that wasn't even that long ago, but I've never seen that one. Melt Mines, Size. he's a, he's the a wizard. The 2005 King Kong looks largely like a silverback gorilla. Mm. That one right there makes sense. I don't know what other, the other stuff is, but this one is the one that Noticeable makes sense. scars and large protruding teeth. This Kong is easily entertained, but much like his original counterpart, is no match for bullets. And a 14 This one makes sense. Ball. Kong, King of the Apes, features a more stylized young Kong, who then grows into an adult. In the second season, he's given a slight redesign with pinker skin. This Kong wears laser-proof arm bracers and a- That's Donkey Kong, man! 
That's Donkey Kong. It's not King Kong. Look at the things around. Occasionally rides a giant jetpack. What is In going on? Kong's what is going on? Kong has great posture. His Here we go. Okay, so the, the original King Kong that I ever seen was way back. And I think it was the one they just went through, but not the one with the jetpack. That didn't even make any sense. But now we're on 2017 Kong Skull Island, which this one is great. Fur is light brown, and he has prominent scarring on his chest. This light Kong brown. defends his island's visitors from his unruly neighbors. In the follow-up, Kong is much larger, has darker fur, and a salt and pepper beard. He also now yields a fancy dorsal fin. Ah, now this is looking correct. An axe to help him face off against the king of the monsters, only to team up and take down an even greater threat. Proving once and for all that Kong really is the king of the apes. The evolution of Jason Voorhees. Let's get into this. The Friday the 13th films are known for horror icon Jason Voorhees. Oh. From misshapen boy to space monster. Oh, that was kind of cool. He cut the screen and opened. <laughs> Let's go through his progression. Jason first appears in. Uh, what is that? Oh my. Okay, maybe I shouldn't do that. He'd probably try to kill me tonight. Or something. Look at his head shape, though. That's crazy looking. Part one is a bald, deformed child who drowned Aww. at Camp Crystal Lake. His mother later. Okay, never mind. I don't want to say that because he was a deformed child. He didn't have no choice over that. That was not okay from now. I'm mean. That was mean of me to laugh. Shouldn't laugh at Jason Voorhees. He's gonna try to kill me now. But let's go back a little Part bit. One is a bald, deformed child who drowned at Camp Crystal Lake. He his drowned. Later avenges his death, only to be killed herself. In part two, Jason is alive somehow and seeking revenge for his mother. Okay, so pause. I played some uh, Jason Voorhees games in the past and like Dead by Daylight, you start out and his mom and the candles and her head. And I, I don't understand that. But they're kind of doing the same thing here. Who's got the mask over the head? That's not Jason Voorhees. He's full grown and wears a plaid shirt, overalls, and a one-eyed sack. Oh. Unmasked his head appears. Whoa, that's the first Jason Voorhees with the bag over his head? And then it, then they take the bag off and he's, how is he even alive? He drowned. Like, come back from the dead? Like, I don't get that. He's lumpy with patchy long hair. Jason is bulkier in part three. In a did we miss something? Hold on, did his, hold on. What did they say about his mom? Child who drowned at Camp Crystal Lake. His mother later avenges his death, only to be killed herself. Avenges his death. How does she avenge his death? What, did she go stab the water? Like, he, was she, he drowned. Like, somebody drowned him? So, in part two, Jason is alive somehow and seeking revenge for his mother. He's full grown. Okay, so she seeked revenge for his death, but like, I guess she must have been just killing people. Then she died, and he's seeking revenge for his. A plaid shirt, Got it. Overalls and a one-eyed sack. Unmasked, his head appears lumpy with patchy wow. long hair. Jason is bulkier in part three and acquires his iconic hockey mask and trades the overalls for blue pants and a green dress shirt. He also ditches his hair for a shaven look. Okay, yeah, the hair was just like it made him look crazier though. It looked like a grown-up Chucky doll or something. By the way, if you want to see the Chucky doll evolution, let me know in the comments below. And oddly shares little resemblance to himself in part two. In the final chapter, Jason's clothes noticeably have more wear and tear. And his face looks much more deformed. Oh my gosh. I'm going to crack him on the head with something? And who took his mask off? That was the Jason Voorhees mask. Nobody touches that. He sliced to death by his own machete oh. and presumed dead. Jason. Nope. 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 He already came back from the dead one time. He's not dead. Trust me. This thing can't die. I don't know what it is, but it ain't Jason Voorhees. Jason Voorhees. Was that a real dude's name? Like, was somebody alive that was named that? There might be somebody out there really named Jason Voorhees. I'm sure. Jason in the new beginning. And this is the story that I gotta, they gotta go with. He sliced to death by his own machete and presumed dead. Jason in the new beginning is revealed to be a copycat killer. So let's move on. Wait, 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 what? Dead. Jason in the new beginning is revealed to be a copycat killer. So let's move on. Huh? In part six, Jason lives. Jason is brought back to life when lightning hits his corpse. While zombified, he dons. The oh my gosh! What the? Oh, this man's been through a few things, but he's been dead. The same attire, but with additional gloves. In the climax, he is chained to the bottom. This man's got a construction outfit on, like he's about to go build a building. Never mind. That's a that's a knife holder. 
<laughs> Why does it got a rock? Of Crystal Lake. In part oh. seven, the new blood, Jason is let loose by a girl with psychic powers and now sports a chain around his neck and clothing that is even more tattered, revealing bone underneath. His mask is broken. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I keep not listening, guys. I gotta go back. What does she do? Let loose by a girl with psychic powers huh? and now sports a chain around his neck and clothing that is even more. Why does she do that? Why would she let him loose? Tattered, revealing bone underneath. His mask is broken and reveals an extremely rotted face. But once again, to stop his rampage, he's sent to the bottom of the lake. Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, has Jason awoken by electric shock. And oh my god, like, it just doesn't matter. He always just gets some random thing to, to bring him back to life. A new mask. He now seems perpetually wet. He hops a boat to New York, and once there, is melted away by toxic sludge. But oh. don't worry. And Jason goes to hell the final Friday. Jason is alive. Again. His mask is now embedded to his face with oh. wisps of hair falling out. Within the first 10 minutes, he's blown up and presumed dead. But the film carries on as a... How in the world is this thing still moving? I don't understand. They melted the dude. It's not a dude. It's some kind of demon possessing his body or something. He got melted. And then he just comes back to life like... How is he that? Like, how did he... Uh, you know, they just they just keep bringing him back. Like, he just keeps dying and dying and dying. And if they want another movie, he comes back somehow. Because I don't know how you come back from the melting. Where's the melting? I can't even find it. Falling out. Within the first ten minutes, he's blown up and presumed dead. But the film carries on as his ghost possesses other people. Oh. He eventually resurrects himself, but is soon stabbed by a magic dagger and dragged into hell. Jason is risen by Freddy Krueger for their crossover, Freddy vs. Jason. His mask is no longer in- Did he come back? Again? Again he came back? Again? He eventually resurrects himself, but is soon stabbed by a magic dagger and dragged into hell. Jason is risen by Freddy Krueger for their crossover, Freddy vs. Okay. Jason. His mask is no longer embedded, his skin appears leathery, and he's gay light. He's Hold on, how is this mask embedded before, but now it's not? Like, ugh, this is stressful. This is stressful thinking. He's also sporting a new brown coat. Jason X shows Jason back to his normal height and flesh-colored skin. And his face here is lump- Oh my god. My man. I mean, I guess when you die and come back 10 million times, that's what happens. My question is, how, how did he get melted and come back? He got melted and came back and- <laughs> That one's the biggest one. But he keeps dying no matter what. He won't die. He's cryogenically frozen and let loose on a spaceship and later rebuilt with nanotechnology. Oh my god. Who did this? Who rebuilt Jason Voorhees and nanotechnology? See, I haven't seen all the movies, guys. I've seen a lot of them, but I ain't seen all of them. And I definitely ain't seen that one. I've seen Freddy vs. Jason, but I don't know what's going on here. What the heck? Which gives him a shiny new mask and bodysuit. With nowhere left to go, the Jason series was rebooted with a more clown. Oh my good. How? What happened to the nanotech, huh? The nanotech's just gone now? Classic look in 2009, leaving Uber Jason in space. Oh, Uber Jason. Ah, heard of that before. Evolution of Michael Myers, 1978 to 2022. This is created by Tell It Animated. Big shout out to him. Don't forget to go show him some love. Drop Michael a like, subscribe, keeps and let's get into back. this. Michael Myers just keeps on coming back. Often worse for wear. So we're going to probably learn a lot here because I don't, I don't know much. But just how has the slasher changed over time? Let's find out now. Reanimated. Michael first appears as All a murderous right. six-year-old in a clown costume who 19. gets tossed into a mental institution. 15 years later, he Now I knew that! breaks out, donning his iconic greenish coveralls and a Captain Kirk mask painted white, giving him big and eye holes and dyed brown hair that is- Wait, who? Now this is- You guys are gonna get mad at me. Captain Kirk- Fate. I didn't know it's what the name of the face was, but Captain Kirk mask painted white. Captain Kirk and dye holes and dyed brown hair that is partially shaved. He's also seen in the spooky ghost disguise. He goes on a Halloween rampage. What? But before he can finish off his last, that is the iconic Michael Myers we all know. As victim Laurie Strode, he's shot dead. It's nice that since 1978, I think that if this is 1978, it still looks very similar. Uh, taking place the same. And I'm sorry to pause so much, but if Michael Myers is a normal person, how does he not die? Halloween 2, Michael is stockier. His coveralls are damaged. 
aged, and his mask is uh, aged with reddish uh, 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 uh. hair. He sets out to finish off Lori Strode, who happens to be his sister, but he gets shot in the eyes and exploded, clearly burning to a crisp. Halloween and Michael Myers comes back from this? He got shot in the head! Twice! His sister, but he gets shot in the eyes and exploded, clearly Whoa. burning to a crisp. Halloween 3 follows Dr. Chalice and his way to a young partner as they investigate an evil mask manufacturer and his fleet of androids, who plan to use witchcraft to melt kids' heads on Halloween. Oh, and uh, Michael makes a brief cameo on a TV screen. In Halloween 4, a still alive man. Okay, okay, so that Halloween movie, there was no Michael, Michael Myers. Michael awakens from a 10 year coma. He's Ugh. larger and wears striped like coveralls Freddy and a less defined mask that has an extended. I mean, look at this. He Guys, big shout out to Tell It Animated. This is just amazing artwork. He's larger and wears striped coveralls and a less defined mask that has an extended neck, shocked eyebrows, and slicked hair with added sideburns. It also sometimes has tinier eye holes and occasionally turns pink and blonde. What After he learns of his sister's death, he sets his sights. Sounds like that movie was all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> and occasionally turns pink and blonde. After he learns of his sister's death, he sets his sights on her daughter, but is shot and falls oh, down a mine shaft. I think I know about that. Evil spirit inhabiting his niece. But let's ignore that. Because in Halloween 5, Michael is nursed back to help by a hermit. His jumpsuit is dirtier, and his mask is now oddly flared with an angrier expression, larger nose, and silky hair. He also goes incognito in a more brutish mask. What the? He continues to hunt. I've never seen Michael Myers in that mask. Silky hair. He also goes the? incognito in a more what the heck is that? Brutish mask. He continues to hunt his niece, sharing a quick tear with her before being tossed in jail. Although a mysterious man in shared a tear to hunt his niece, sharing a quick tear with her before being tossed in jail. Although a mysterious man in black busts him out. Six years later, in Curse, Michael wears sleek gray coveralls wow. and a more. I've never seen Michael Myers with like any kind of emotion, so that would have been cool. I might have to go see that one. That was pre 1995 because the next out. one's 1995. Six years later, in Whoa, he's thin and tall. In Curse, Michael wears sleek gray coveralls and a more ghoulish mask with large ears, dark lips, and messy hair. He also sometimes- Oh, that Michael Myers is probably terrifying. He looks slimmer. It's revealed that Michael is controlled by a druid curse to exterminate his family, so he goes after his niece's baby, but gets tranquilized and knocked out. Although, in the producer's cut, he's instead immobilized by a circle of stones and then stealthily sneaks away. It oh, so it's different in the producer's cut. Whoa. The previous four films, in H2O, Michael goes goes on a road trip to find Wait, Laurie, what? They just the deleted them? by a circle of stones and then stealthily sneaks away, ignoring the previous four films oh. in H2O. So from the stories from those, you just throw that Michael out the window. Michael goes on a road trip to find Laurie Strode. He gains height. Wait a second. Oh, ignoring the previous four films. So I guess we're going back to when he got shot in the eyes because you can see the mask. Looks like he got he shot burns, in the eyes. wears charcoal colored coveralls and multiple masks, including a Halloween 6 mask, a bloated mask, Mask, and an awful CGI monstrosity, eventually settling on a mask with revealing eye holes and poofy hair. He goes head to head with his sister, but look like a rock star right now. Leaves, well, ahead. Although in Resurrection, it's revealed that Michael switched outfits with a paramedic. His new mask has more definition, noticeable makeup, and less frizzy hair. He oh. finally manages to eliminate his sister and then gets entangled in a web show. Although he's taken out with kung fu and exposed what wiring. The? Or is he? But that what? Wait, what? Although he's taken out with kung fu and exposed wiring. Or is he? But that doesn't matter because this chicken fried killer is abandoned for a remake series where oh. Michael appears as a murderous 10 year old in clown attire. He also dons the signature Michael. It's going to be 2150 and they're going to be making Michael Meyer movies. A mask which has smaller features and thicker hair. Once locked up, he starts wearing paper mache masks and grows into a muscle bound freak. Whoa. After breaking out, he finds a greasy brown jumpsuit and his now grungy mask. He even recreates oh. the original's ghost look. He goes after Man, that mask was scary. His young sister, but is shot multiple times. Oh my gosh. Mask. But he's right as rain in the sequel. His mask deteriorates. Oh my. Ending his mayhem. But he's right as rain in the sequel. Oh my god. That it may have been one of the most terrifying. Well, his mask deteriorates even more, and he oh. incorporates hobo inspired attire in his ensemble, pretty well ditching his mask. His younger self is also seen, but looks completely different. This time, Michael is led by his ghost mom to again attack his sister. But this bum <laughs> is shot. Why is the, is the mom the mom of Lloyd Strode? If so, why does she hate her daughter so much? Police. 
ignoring all other follow-ups, in Halloween 2018, Michael is again taller. His coveralls are darker. Hey, before before we end this, he might be seven foot eight in the NBA. And his mask is boxier with taut hair, no exposed flesh tones, and added aging. He's apparently Ooh, been locked yeah. up for 40 years, but when getting transferred, he breaks free and goes on one of his usual sprees until he's hit by a car, briefly oh! getting knocked out. I've seen this movie. His insane doctor to wear the trademark mask. But Michael awakens and nips that twist in the butt. He then faces his now not sister. Yep, go into the basement, catch it on fire. No and spoilers, family, but that's a spoiler. Getting trapped in her burning house. Although in Halloween Kills, he's saved by. I said no spoilers and I spoiled. Some that helpful makes no sense. firemen. Michael has heavy battle damage, bandaging around his hand, and oh, a two face yeah. style burn. He's off. All right, here we go. This was one day ago. Let's see if this has got the updated movie in it. I just seen the updated movie, so this may be spoiler time. So seen in a flashback with a DH 2018 mask and navy blue coveralls. This time, Michael takes on a mob. You know, he was in the basement with the fire, so the the mask is melted, so it may have been melted to his skin. Mob of angry idiots, with each kill supposedly leveling up his evil powers. He then executes Lori's daughter. In Halloween Ends, a sewer-dwelling Michael is covered in moss. His hand is no longer bandaged, and he's become extremely weak. He apparently manifests his evil into a local outcast who takes on the Michael persona, oh, yep. but fails miserably. I, I wasn't thinking that he was weak. When the real Michael comes to retrieve- And she didn't shoot him. Wait a second. Retrieve his mask, he's- Oh, sh she shot the, the imposter because he put the mask on. Yeah, makes sense. Taken down by the remaining strodes, with the entire town then yep. mulching his remains in a shredder, finishing the Ugh. shape once and for all. Well, until the next reboot, at least. There was one little part that I would say didn't get included, and it was the part where before he goes into the shredder, well, this might be spoilers, they cut him all up and he bled everywhere. It was horrible. <laughs> Evolution of Iron Man by Let's Terrorist. See. Then with the help of his cellmate, he turned a pile of scraps into an iron opportunity. This is Iron Man's evolution, animated. To stop shrapnel from entering his heart, First of all, this is really nice. This is really well done, so big shout out to Tell It Animated. Tony equips himself with a mini arc reactor that also powers his suit. His first suit, the bulky Mark I. Oh man, look at that thing. The bulky Mark I. This guy's explaining everything, but wow. How would he even move around with that thing? That is heavy. I don't remember seeing that one because I played the Marvel Avengers game and it wasn't that. But then again, the Marvel Avengers game, when he put that suit on, it wasn't his first suit. It was just a messed up suit that he had laying around. He is mostly bulletproof and features both a flamethrower and missile launcher to defend against his captors. Plus, jet boots capable of flight to aid in his escape. Once free, Tony vows to never sell weapons again and creates the Titanium Steel Mark II. This suit be- Oh, wow. The Mark II was a huge upgrade. Now, guys, let me know in the comments below. Do you think Iron Man is a superhero or is his suit? the superhero I, I don't know what i think i don't know if he is the superhero because everybody else got superpowers but he's just got the suit features the jarvis ai system i'm online sir added repulsors and unibeam a heads-up display and enhanced flight abilities although it ices up at high altitudes but this is fixed by adding gold alloy to the mark three suit composition Whoa. in addition to red coloring shoulder mounted guns kinetic micro missiles and additional flares Whoa! when this update stark faces his former business partner turned ironmonger in iron man 2 the brighter more streamlined mark 4 now they say mark 3 now they're on mark 4 but do you guys know that it's like mark 40s it's crazy now before i said is he a superhero now his suit may make him the the suit may be the superhero but his brain, his smarts is the superhero, right? Which adds yeah. the ability to filter pee, is worn briefly, as well as the Mark V, which transforms from a suitcase into a thin-plated red and silver armor. Whoa! It only has his base. Some of these suits that I'm seeing, like, we already advanced all the way to the Mark IV, and the Mark IV is, like, one of the newest ones that I've seen, so... Oh, man, this is gonna be crazy what I'm gonna see. ...and is less durable. Due to his various arc reactors apparently poisoning him, Tony, supplied with a blueprint from his deceased father, creates a new element to power his arc reactors. His next suit, the Mark VI, features silver accents and a triangular unibeam, is immune and even charged by electricity, is water-resistant, features additional grenade launchers, and has a single use laser in this suit oh my gosh that one is insane now they said that that him this was his partner but i feel like his partner is a super villain he or combats something the yes he is whiplash, 
In the Avengers, Tony uses metallic bracelets to deploy the pod-shaped Mark 7, which can assemble over Tony in mid-air. It's much bulkier and is the first suit with its own integrated arc reactor, as well as thrusters that was in the cool. back to free his hands during flight. Now here's the thing, I've seen the other Marks, like Mark 3, Mark 4, they look the same, but I thought those were the ones in the movies, but I know the one in the movie is the one that goes to his body like that. Multiple use lasers and much more firepower to defend against unwanted aliens. It's also apparently capable of briefly flying into a wormhole to nuke an alien mothership. In Iron Man wow. 3, in an attempt to manage his PTSD, Tony builds many Jarvis-controlled suits referred to as the Iron Legion including the Mark 8 with added Kevlar for protection against missiles. Oh. The more refined Mark 9 with an additional jetpack. Man, we just the Mark skipped 10, Mark which has oh added flight God. stabilizers for extra speed. The Mark 11 Woo. built as a prototype stealth suit with a more detailed helmet. The dark and gold plated Mark 12 with We're skipping Mark like there's no tomorrow now. What happened? Durable exoskeleton. The streamlined Mark 13 featuring a powerful rectangular arc reactor. The Mark 14 which is more lightweight for added speed. The so hold on, does each like Mark additional, like from Mark 13 to Mark 14, does Mark 13, 14 have everything that Mark 13 has or is it like, now it's just like different styles or something? Stealth suit Mark 15 that slightly camouflages itself with plates that can switch from light to dark. The Mark 16 with significant upgrades to the camouflaging system. The Okay, Mark so he just proved it. If there's something in the Mark 13, the Mark 14 has all of the others. It, that would make sense, but I'm thinking like, if he had all of those suits, and the suits did different things, he could be like, ah, you know what? We're going into flames. Let's get this one. Ah, you know what? We're going into ice. Let's get this one. But if he had all of that in one, then he just grabs the one. Mark 17 with an oversized chest to fit a powerful unibeam. The Justice Chest Heavy Mark 18, which also incorporates the camouflaging system. The uniquely colored Mark 19. Okay, okay. I, I've seen the movies. I don't ever remember a iron an Iron Man suit looking like this. This is I don't even know what number that is. Mark X one X I X I X. I don't know. Agility and speed. The black and gold Mark twenty capable of long distance travel. Oh, the that looks gold sick. Mark twenty one built for high altitude flights. The darker Mark twenty two with snazzy red flames, possibly intended as a war machine armor for Tony's friend Rhodey. The smooth camo armored Mark twenty three capable of withstanding extreme heat. The bulky brown. And this is the evolution of Iron Man, but this is the evolution of uh, the suit. Like, what happened to Tony Stark? I guess Tony Stark ain't doing too much besides making new suits every day. Gold Mark 24 built to endure heavy firepower. Oh, the Mark man. 25, which boasts powerful jackhammer arms. The green accented Mark 26, which retains the jackhammers and is able to resist powerful elements, including gamma radiation. The blue and orange Mark 27. What? That I ain't never seen that a day in my life. Blue and orange. I, I've lost them at like Mark 3. Does that mean there's gonna be like 50 Iron Man movies? Evans, the only armor able to completely camouflage into its surroundings. The heavy orange and black Mark 28, which, like Mark 26, is built to withstand radiation. The durable gray Mark 29 features a singular jackhammer arm. The sleek silver and blue Mark 30 and the updated deep red Mark 33, which both contain retractable vibranium. We are on Mark 33 and we're only halfway through. And blades and are able to transfer energy to certain ports for extra power. The lightweight teal Mark 31 able to reach high velocity speeds. The dark silver Mark 32, which oh, has an enlarged unibeam but was built to be more agile. The silver plated Mark 34, what which incorporates a left hand claw arm. The beefy red Mark 35 that can attach not one, but two claw arms. The, the similarly plated orange and silver Mark 36 made for peacekeeping and crowd control. The light green Mark 37. They, they made a Iron Man suit for peace control and okay now they're just making suits for no reason Built for deep underwater travel and the only armor to be stocked with torpedoes the massive blue mark 38 capable of lifting enormous amounts of weight the white and black mark 39 built for space travel the gray the gold one was for that i thought like mark 20 and light blue mark 40 which can reach speeds exceeding mach 5 and the thinly plated mark 41 which can disassemble and reassemble mid-flight <sighs> Huh. In the same film, after Mark inserting 41? microchips into his arms, Tony is able to don the primarily gold and lightweight Mark 42 piece by piece. This armor carries over many skills and attributes from the Iron Legion and can be piloted remotely by Tony with an AR display headset. 
Wow. This time around, Tony battles a vengeful former nerd with help from his many armors. Following the battle, to prove his affection to his girlfriend, Pepper Potts, he destroys all of his iron suits and then finally gets surgery to remove the shrapnel from his chest, I eliminating don't remember the need this. for what? his own arc reactor. Age of Ultron features the traditionally colored Mark 43, which is infrared to see through walls and incorporates a sentry mode to assist Tony when he's not wearing it. It can also attack- Okay, so wait a second. He's not going to wear the suits anymore. He's just going to control them, which makes a lot more sense. Makes a lot more sense. There's no danger to Tony Stark anymore. The humongous Hulkbuster armor, complete with a sedative gas sprayer and hydraulic puncher to subdue a <laughs> raging Hulk. Tony also makes use of a group of new white and blue Iron Legion drones. Finally, the predominantly red and smooth plated Mark 45 is worn. This suit Where is does he get all of this information? I could Google this for three years and not get all of this. Hexagonal chest piece, and since Jarvis became part of a humanoid super being, Hello, Tony. This suit is instead run by the Irish Friday OS. I'm online, boss. In the Mark 45, Tony helps defeat evil sentient robots, uh, which he accidentally created. In Captain America Civil War, the Mark 46 is introduced and features various accent lights, a trapezoidal chest piece, and the first fully retractable helmet. In this film, Tony pushes for government regulations on the Avengers, but Captain America challenges the proposal, resulting in an iron cap clash. This oh, is ridiculous. Is Why? I am lost right now. I'm not lost, but I'm lost because we just went through like 90,000 Iron Man suits. Iron Man or Tony Stark is not supposed to be in the suits anymore because he blew them all up, took the thing out of his chest for his girlfriend. He's safe now. And then he was going to control the uh, the Iron Man suits, right? I, I might have lost that, messed that up. But now he's saying that he's in the suit again. Makes no sense because if he doesn't have the reactor in his chest, how is he going to even do this? <gasps> and why? Is Captain America fighting the rights for the Avengers? His fighting patterns, Tony ultimately loses, and the Avengers go their separate ways. Then he changes his name to Tony Stank. In Spider-Man <laughs> Homecoming, Tony uses the more silver Mark 47, armed with launchable grappling chains and remote Wi-Fi control, to keep tabs on Peter Parker from a distance. In Infinity War, Tony lends the Hulkless Bruce Banner the Mark 48, a more streamlined Hulkbuster suit while Tony is outfitted with a new heart-shaped arc reactor capable of deploying his sleek nanotech Mark 50. This suit can form extra wings and weapons, as well as cannons, shields, and thrusters. 48! 48! I know about 48! Mach 10 and is perfectly sealed for traveling in space. It can shoot off some of its nanotech and produce a suture spray to help heal wounds. Although, all of this <laughs> still isn't enough to prevent Thanos from snapping away half of the universe. And in game, oh. Tony is starving and floating through space. But he's oh. brought back to Earth and then raises a family. He gifts his wife the blue and gold Mark 49 rescue armor, featuring a displacer pack that can emit energy blasts. Meanwhile, this. Tony helps figure out time travel and sports what? a gray and red Quantum Realm suit as he goes back in time to help get. It looks like the Ant Man suit! Another magical time. But in Ant Man, he's traveling in time. Oh my gosh, this is stones. And says a quick hello to his father. His latest iron suit, the Mark 85, features OG gold colored thighs and shoulders with added power to generate force fields and redirect lightning blasts. This suit's gauntlets are capable of holding the infinity stones that he uses to snap Thanos out of existence, causing Tony to sacrifice his life for humanity's survival. Life functions crazy. And, and now his girlfriend that didn't want him in this suit is in the suit herself like what's going on i need to watch all the movies but i don't feel like the movies even got this far the book ending the iron man mcu story well until they dig him up for some prequel sequel side wow evolution of hulk Connor was just your everyday super genius scientist then he was exposed to gamma radiation wait a second he was exposed to the radiation which i thought he like I thought he did this to himself on purpose. Becomes the lovable monstrous Green Hulk. This is his live action evolution, animated. Bruce Banner first appears in the television series, The Incredible Hulk, named David for some reason. As he searches for a cure to his Hulk affliction, he's pursued by a nosy reporter. When transformed, he appears as a tall muscular man in green paint with an exaggerated brow and a straight haired wig. After the series. Wow, that's the old version of Hulk guys. 
Look at that. That looks way different. That is the first version, but he's like, he's a little bit bigger, but he's not like he is today. Hulk is Hulk. This Hulk would appear in three TV movies. In the first, the Hulk teams up with Thor to battle some generic bad guys. 1988 was the first Hulk movie. And also attempts to make way for a Thor spinoff series, which never happens. The sequel features a now bearded David Banner, although his beard disappears when he transforms. Together with Daredevil, they take on the crime boss Kingpin, while also trying to create space for a Daredevil spinoff series, which also never happens. What the heck? What is with all the spinoff series that don't ever happen? That would have been cool to see like Hulk and Thor and then Hulk and Daredevil, which huh, that would have been really good. In the final film, we see Banner tracking down a spy agency. As the Hulk, he attacks their plane and in the explosion falls to Earth, succumbing to his wounds. Hulk's feature film debut showcases a younger Bruce Banner able to unleash a baby. Oh, so he died, but they went back in time for the they, see, this is the movie that I would remember. The other movies are really old. You, you guys may have seen this one, but see that Hulk's bigger now, too. And also, this video is called The Evolution of Hulk. Is this the evolution of Hulk, or is this the evolution of the Hulk movies? And when did he get the purple pants? He faced an overly saturated Hulk. He grows larger the angrier he becomes, ultimately reaching over 15 feet tall. He goes Dang. head to head with his element-absorbing father, but the government attempts to nuke them both. 15 foot tall! Just imagine, I'm like, I'm not tall at all, guys. I'm like five foot seven, eight. I'm pretty short. But five foot or 15 foot, that's that's three of me. Wow. Ha! That's tall. He goes head to head with his element absorbing father. But the government attempts to nuke them both, defeating his father while Bruce survives and makes his way to South America. The MCU reboot opens in South America, where a new Bruce Banner is being hunted by the government. When provoked, he unleashes a more yellowish and veiny looking Hulk. What? This time, Why does the color keep changing? Hold on, wait a second! Scaling to around 9 feet tall. Huh? You know, this don't make any sense. Why was he 15 foot before? And now he's 9 foot and he changed colors and everything. I don't get this. He takes out a DNA spliced abomination and manages to hide away in Canada, where he tries to gain control of his anger. Oh, I remember that. I think I remember that because in one of the movies, he was in this area or one of the superheroes were. There was in this beautiful like lake thing with the mountains and a cabin out in the middle of nowhere. And I think that was him, but I could be very wrong. And live in peace. In the Avengers, Banner somehow looks completely different. And what? when transformed, appears less yellowish and less veiny, with added chest hair, rounder facial features, five o'clock shadow, and a more slouch stance. He teams up what with his fellow the superhero. Heck? That don't even make any sense. See, the evolution of Hulk just really don't make sense at this point. Like, why is he greener? Why is he not greener? Why is he limer? Why has he got less veins? Why why does he have chest hair now? Is he getting old? Like, eh. What was a young Hulk before? But he went back in time, and then the, the older Hulk didn't even have the chest hair. The older Hulk wasn't even... The, the older Hulk died, and then he came back, and he looked different. Like, what? What I'm trying to say here, guys, is this story has been twisted and manipulated how many times? For us to save humanity from a puny god. Iron Man 3 features a sleepy Bruce Banner lending an ear to Tony Stark before coming back in full force for the Avengers Age of Ultron. The Hulk now wears stretchy purple pants and has more exaggerated facial features. But he As looks he's the put same. Under mind control, he attacks random civilians, only to be stopped by Tony Stark's Hulkbuster suit. He then helps take out super intelligent robots and promptly flies a ship into space despite his girlfriend's pleas to stay. What the in heck? In Ragnarok, the Hulk is now living on the junk planet of Sakaar, sporting a new haircut, an upright stance, and more human facial features. He dons shiny gladiator armor to fight Thor, then agrees to help save the Asgardian. Oh, I remember this because he's there with Thor and then Thor has to go get them. And it's what he's about to tell you because I've seen some of these movies. Thor's going to go get them. He doesn't want to leave, I think. And then he's going to get him to go save the world or something. From Thor's sister and her pet wolf. They then head back pet to wolf? Earth on their ship. That was not no pet. Did you see the size of that thing? Let's go back. Let's just remind you. I don't know how tall this Hulk is, but let's just say that he's 15 foot. Because I, I don't remember. We say he's 15 foot. That wolf is 45 foot, probably. He's three Hulks. 45 foot tall wolf on all fours. Do you know what size I am? I'm probably as tall as the, the wolf's eye. That's not a normal wolf. They then head back to Earth on their ship. 
Avengers. Oh, that's because the wolf was on a different planet, right? Avengers Infinity War begins with Thanos boarding their ship mid-voyage and facing the Hulk in battle. Hulk loses the fight, and for the rest of the film, Bruce Banner is no longer able to bring out his large green counterpart, opting to wear Tony Stark's Hulkbuster suit to keep up in battle. So how will the Hulk appear in the next Avengers? Maybe a mohawk and leather jacket? Or maybe She-Hulk <laughs> will take his place. Because <laughs> uh, what he's saying is like the storyline is so everywhere that we don't know what Hulk's going to be. Yeah, like if you could see his pants, he had the stretchy pants. And then now what he's showing here is ripped pants and chest hair and then a mohawk and an outfit. You know, Hulk's just been everywhere. Like, we don't really know what he's going to be. And then she's, he says She-Hulk. Here's one thing that I don't understand about She-Hulk. She-Hulk is tiny! Does She-Hulk just turn into, like, green? But if he's 15 foot, She-Hulk is, like, 10 foot. So she's kind of big, but she's not muscular like that. So She-Hulk just probably... She-Hulk probably sucks. That is, if she hasn't been snapped away by Thanos. Oh, didn't think about that one! Let's see the evolution of Ghostface. Ghostface reawoke the slasher genre in the 90s, but how has his costuming and ever-altering identity changed ever since? Let's go through his evolution. Wow, okay. The logo here, the Ghostface logo, brings back some memories for me because I haven't seen Ghostface in a very long time. And find out. In the original screen, Ghostface wears a sparkly robe with square arm tatters and a pointed frills in the bottom robe? edges. More ghoulish masks were considered before settling on the peanut-eyed ghost mask. You know what? The Ghostface mask that we're seeing right here it's not even that scary if you want to go back and look at this some of the face masks that they used just now on this animation to make it look scary i don't know if that was the real ones that they talked about but those looked way scarier More ghoulish masks were considered before like that if i would have seen that maybe it wouldn't have been as scary because that kind of looks whack you know that that may have been like kind of cheesy the peanut -eyed. oh that you know what that one may have been scarier ghost mask a second mask that's wider has thinner eyes a small nose and smaller mouth along with the lighter neck piece is also worn by ghost face i ain't gonna lie it all looked the exact same to me nothing changed there for me i mean there was a little bit it looks a little weird right now but i don't think this is the original ghost face ghost face if you know what i'm saying because i remember i seen a ghost face and it it looked like it looked like this but maybe this is a newer version or something what is this is this a newer or older version or original version I, i've seen this maybe it's something new but whatever whatever yes, i guess it's not even real or i guess that one's not even the the real one before or after the evolution let's watch the evolution because i'm getting confused by that ghost face that i just seen this target sydney uh, as victims gradually get picked off, Sydney ultimately faces her tormentor, who reveals himself to be her boyfriend, Billy Loomis, and his peer pressured friend, Stu. Bigs. Okay, so it was a big joke, right? Playing that her philandering mother broke up Billy's parents, so they took her out and planned to finish Sydney off, too. But never Stu mind, it wasn't a joke. It was not a joke at all. You know, I haven't seen Scream or Ghostface in a long time, and. <laughs> This ain't right. You get the TV tossed on him, and Billy is taken out by multiple shots. In Ooh. Scream 2, a copycat appears. He has more circular arm tatters, squared off rips on the bottom hem, and a more pronounced neckline. His mask has a le- Hello, Sydney. <laughs> I remember the phone calls too. His curved right eye, a creased mouth, and more pronounced cheeks. He also wears a secondary mask featuring squinty eyes and a larger mouth. A secondary and at one mask. Point, he changes into civilian clothing in an ancient Greek style robe. The copycat eliminates Sydney's college classmates and reveals himself to be both her crazy acquaintance what is Mickey this? and Billy Loomis's revenge-seeking mother. Okay, so it seems like with Ghostface, we it's been a while, like I said, since I've seen it. So with Ghostface, it seems like whoever's gonna die, it's by someone that they know. And that person that they know just wants to kill them. I and mean, I couldn't tell you why. Look at While this. While Mrs. Loomis decommissions her partner, huh? Sydney is saved by the man once suspected to have slain her mom. Although Mickey rebounds from one weird. last scare, he is promptly taken out out for good. Yet, Ghostface is back in Scream 3. This time, his mask lacks the former mouth crease and has more curved eyes. Additionally, he wears a secondary mask with larger eyes and briefly hides inside of- How did he even know that the eyes were- That was barely any bigger. How did he know? Property of Woodsboro Corner. Bag. He also now uses oh, a magical voice changer that can sound like anyone he wants. He proceeds to execute I remember the that. He changed his voice to sound like a girl and then it was- Hello, Sydney. I think I think that's how. I think that's how. 
Aston Crew of Stab 3, and subsequently reveals himself to be the film's director and Sydney's long lost half brother, Roman, who apparently the? also secretly planned the events of Scream 1 along with Billy and Stu. But in the end, this ghost face is stabbed by his half sister and finally defeated by a flurry of bullets. In Scream 4, Ghostface appears. You know, you gotta think. Teledanimated probably went back and watched each one of these movies, the old ones and everything, to know all these facts. Like, how would he know all these facts? I mean, come on. And then not only that, he's drawing them. He's drawing Again, them so good. His main mask's eyes are slightly spaced apart. Another secondary mask is used with Oh wider my god, the mask looked the exact same. Main I gotta mask's say. eyes are slightly spaced apart. Oh, Another barely. Secondary mask how did he notice that little detail? ...is used with wider cheeks, smaller eyes, and a smaller nose. After slashing a new generation of victims, this ghost face turns out to be Cindy's cousin, Jill, and her boy... Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, like I said, guys, it's been a long time since I've watched Ghostface, so every time I see who Scream is or Ghostface, it's a big surprise for me. It's Sydney's girl cousin? What? Toy Charlie, both intent on becoming the famous survivors of their attack. Huh? They want to be the famous survivors so they kill everybody else. However, Jill betrays Charlie in order to become the sole victim, but she's later defibrillated and then shot down. In the MTV series, Ghostface dons a rain poncho and a mask that's more human shaped with un- Oh yes, this is it. Okay, so now he comes to it. All right, so this is the new version in the Ghostface thing. They just wanted to make it look, I guess, more realistic of what somebody would wear and not the iconic Ghostface mask uneven eyes discoloration and golden straps on the edges that ain't he's also they're trying to copy they're trying to copy jason Voorhees, man so now referred to as the lakewood slasher he what? terrorizes finally what? they changed their name too oh no that ain't they can't name it scream or ghost Earl face get out of here friends and eventually confesses to being her secret half sister piper who is shot and falls in a lake emma's boyfriend in a lake and he's, she's down there with jason Voorhees now and, and piper's secret lover becomes the new lakewood slasher in season two but he gets caught and put in jail before being silenced by a third lakewood slasher what? never to be revealed because in season three the original ghost face returns this time that's what we want to see the original ghost face we don't want to see this stupid dude with a white mask and three random holes because that ain't scream robe is or ghost face. has a floppier hood there we go sleeves, and no open yes neckline. while his mask is shinier and features a more prevalent jawline he harasses football loving dion before revealing himself to be his half brother jamal who holds a grudge at dion for stealing their departed brother's identity but jamal is soon betrayed by a second ghost face okay first of all I haven't seen this series on MTV, that's what they said, but why is there always another Scream no matter, or Ghostface no matter what? If they, Ghostface gets revealed, oh well, someone else found the outfit and they want to kill them now. <laughs> Their goth friend Beth, who apparently just likes horror movies, and that makes her evil. However, she's pushed through a glass roof and miraculously survives before finally oh, being Oh, she looks like down. some... Outside like of a the ghost original face. screen series, a ghost face parody also appears as the emotive villain. Yes, scary movie. Okay, so scary movie was really good. Really good. You know, parodies like this, you, you don't expect to get big, but this one did. But in scary movie. Causing confusion among <laughs> casual movie fans who still mistake the two franchises for one another. Another parody, Shriek If You Know What I Did Last Friday the 13th, features a Jason Voorhees-like villain. Okay, see, this is what they've been wanting to do for so long. Jason Voorhees-like, what is that? That is not okay. No, just stop what they're doing now. Like, this is... Whoever decided to choose this is not okay. And that accidentally melts his hockey mask into a lumpy ghost face appearance. And in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, a wide cheek ghost face appears, but turns out to be an orangutan on the set of... You mean to tell me an orangutan? <laughs> What's the ghost face? They th took this story and stretched it as far as they possibly could. Because that don't make no sense. The then make believe Scream 4. Oh, and just for fun, you can also play as Ghostface, sporting a more tactical looking coat with floating straps, in Dead by Daylight. I knew he about the Dead by Daylight, but he looks weird. What is this? A variety of different color variations, including a devil version. But as far as we're concerned, nothing beats a classic. 
Yeah, you got that right. Nothing beats the classic. Big shout out to Tell It Animated. The evolution of Spider-Man. One part radioactive spider bite and one part departed Uncle Ben is the perfect recipe for any Spider-Man. Hold just on, pause. Let's rewind real quick. One part departed Uncle Ben is the perfect recipe for any Spider-Man. But just one part Uncle Ben. You see what he did there? He was saying Uncle Ben was very important, which he is because Uncle Ben died as Peter Parker's uncle. See, I know because I watched a movie. How much has he changed throughout his live action films? Climb on and let's untangle this together. Oh, sounds Peter good Parker to me. This animation looks amazing. 10 out of 10, baby. Appears in 1977's TV series, The Amazing Spider-Man and its film trilogy counterpart. He dons an ill-fitting red and blue suit with circular mirror- Okay, so what he's doing is going to the first movie and get, grabbing the first ones that they've seen in the first movies. Which I guess makes sense. But see, here's my thing. With the new Spider-Mans, I thought Spider-Man had to get bit by the spider to become Spider-Man. But now in the new movies, Spider-Man is all about- it, it, it could be anybody. You just gotta have the Spider-Man outfit. They're kind of making it more like Iron Man. But I don't like that. I, I like the fact that you gotta get bit by Spider-Man and you have the abilities of Spider-Man regardless or not if you have the suit on. Let me know, which one y'all like more? The newer ones or the older? I think the older one is more authentic because Spider-Man is a true superhero with or without the suit. Eye holes and an emblem that resembles an ant. He also wears a metal belt and brace. Hold on, what? He had an ant on his suit? Slip, which shoots his webbing. While the series ran in the States, the Japanese film and TV series had its own web slinger. This time, a motorcyclist named Takia Yamashiro. After encountering an alien from the planet Spider, he receives a bracelet that injects him with his- Hold on, what is going on? What was that movie called? You can see at the bottom it's called S Obviously it's a different language, but it's called Supida man It should still be Spider-Man! Well, I guess Spider in- Okay, never mind. Never mind. This was in 1978-1979. This time, a motorcyclist named Takia Yamashiro. After encountering an alien from the planet Spider, he receives a bracelet that what? injects him with his spider powers, along with spider weakness. What? An alien from planet Spider gave this man Spider-Man abilities? This doesn't even make any sense. Spider-Man got bit by a spider. That's the original story, and I'm sticking to this it. Is. It also holds his suit, which is similar to the American version, but with thinner, bright, wide eyes. The bracelet Whoa. shoots out a rope and net instead of webs, and can summon a flying spider car. What? As well as a spacecraft that can turn into a giant flying rope. No! No! You can't just make up any Spider-Man story that you want! Spider-Man has a story, and we stick to it, okay? He's Marvel! But Flash forward back to America in 2002. A nerdy Peter Parker appears in Spider-Man. There we go. In there we go. trilogy only, he produces organic shooting webs. He first wears a- Oh, I see. See, this is probably the one I first seen, but the other one was before then. So they were just making up a bunch of garbage. Did they not follow the comic book? I'm, I'm confused, but whatever, I guess. What is that outfit he's got on? Bulky sweater and back lava to wrestle, and eventually upgrades to a form-fitting suit. There we go. raised gray webbing and triangle-shaped eyes. Even though this spider suit would become damaged, it would return in Spider-Man 2, this time mm. with a slightly larger and differently shaped spider emblem. The suit takes yet another beating, oh. but would reappear again in Spider-Man 3, this time enhanced by a black... Are we going to talk about how Peter Parker became Spider-Man, or are we just going to act like a suit gave it all to him? What, what are we going to do here? See, I'm a big fan of Tell It Animated because he does a great job, but at the same time, I'm starting to get aggravated with the Spider-Man evolution story, okay? I'm sorry. Black symbiote from space. It darkens the suit, what? modifies the emblem, and makes Spider-Man a bit irritable. Eventually, he tires of the symbiote and takes it off, but it quickly finds another host. While there was more sequels- Which is Venom, right? I didn't know the symbiote, which may not have been Venom, the symbiote that went to Spider-Man. See, I'm a little confused now. It looked like it went to somebody else, but was that somebody else? Never mind. For the series. Was that Eddie? Instead, it was rebooted in 2012 Venom. with The Amazing Spider-Man. This time, Peter Parker is taller and more lean. Ah. He wears a red mask, sunglasses, to fight blonde criminals. Then upgrades to a thick and predominantly blue textured suit with a longer emblem and smaller yellow lenses. In the sequel, the suit drops the texture. I don't like that one. Red, and the eyes are brighter and more enlarged. Despite setting the scene for the story to continue, this series would be scrapped in favor of putting Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Initially what? appearing as a small child in Iron Man 2, Spider-Man's official reappearance many years later depicts a younger Peter Parker gifted an AI advanced suit by Tony Stark. 
Is they scrapped the original story, which was the worst thing you could have done. Suit has animated eyes, a retractable wingsuit, a hidden parachute, a flying drone emblem, and special webbing abilities. When it's taken back, that's cool. But if you look on the suit, you can see the little uh, the thing. The thing is what's creating the webs. No, guys, I'm telling you. What creates the webs is it comes out of his veins because he's got bit by the spider. What are you doing? Act by Play. Tony Stark, Parker instead wears a sleeveless hoodie and goggles to face off against the Vulture. In Avengers Infinity War, Spider-Man upgrades the self-assembling red, now gold, and blue iron spider armor. It has enhanced durability, helps Parker breathe in space, and has four extra spider legs, all of which will surely help him battle Thanos. The evolution of the Joker. Time to put on a happy face. From the campy to the creepy, we're going to the notable live-action appearances of the Clown Prince of Crime. The 1960s TV Joker. series Joker wears a pink suit and a green dress shirt. His face is pale with a painted smile, wild green hair, and visible mustache. This okay, joke yeah, yeah, yeah. See, in some of the other evolutions, you know, I was confused by the beginning, but I'm watching this one. And it looks Kurt like the a Joker. master of many disguises and a world-class surfer, but mainly he's a prankster, often foiled by the dynamic duo oh! in the 1989 film Mob Enforcer. You know, you haven't seen Batman and Robin together in a long time. Jack Napier falls into a vat of chemicals and his surgery is botched, leaving him with pale skin and an elongated smile. Oh my God, look at his head. He wears a purple striped suit, a matching trench coat and fedora, and Don Red lips. There we go. We're getting there. We're getting there. Dyed green hair. There we go. See, the Joker seems to have always looked this way, and it does hasn't really changed much over the years. Also sports comfortable nightwear, a mime inspired mm. getup, and a more eccentric outfit. You can still tell in every single one of these that this is the Joker. Fit with plaid pants, plus an occasional silk beret, and he sometimes uses concealer and dresses in normal clothing. After Whoa. it's revealed in a flashback scene that he shot Bruce Wayne's parents, this Joker is roped up and falls to his demise. The Dark Knight's Joker initially wears civilian clothing and a clown mask, but more often wears a blue dress shirt, green vest, whoa, 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 what do you say? The more, whoa, 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 what was that? a clown mask, but and that he shot Bruce Wayne's parents. This Joker is roped up Okay, so yeah, they're, the, you know, dumb. enemies and stuff. He shot him down, Mine. blah, blah, blah. The Dark Knight's Joker initially wears civilian clothes. The Dark Knight's Joker. So, the in the Dark Knight, the movie, they're saying that this Joker's like the this, even though he's not like. Mask. Yeah, I'm getting confused. Often wears a blue dress shirt. Why in the world would that Joker wear a mask? Green That's not. Vest, pinstriped pants and a purple trench coat. His mouth scars are jagged. His makeup is messy, and his hair is. Oh, okay. There we go. There we go. I thought he was saying that he just wore a mask. Well, he did say that. So why would he wear a mask if he could look like this? Because this is much scarier. And I don't know if you guys know, but the scars right here on his mouth, I'm pretty sure has something to do with the Joker's dad. I haven't seen the new Joker movie, but I think it's something to do with his, his dad. And he cut his mouth open to be a permanent smile or something. Unkempt. He goes incognito in police attire, as well as a nurse's uniform. Complete wow. With a brunette wig. That looks like a newer Although Joker, he though. He recounts multiple origin stories. He is really just an anarchist that ultimately gets hung up to dry. The DC. Whoa, this is some good animation work right now. EU features a pale Joker. Oh, he's kind of. He looks buff, but I know exactly who this is. Suicide Squad. This was 2016. Wasn't even that long ago. A pale Joker, so he's got this all over Last his body. With tattoos. Is he just pale, or did he put the white makeup all over his body? See, I, I thought he had white on his face only. Slicked green hair and silver grills. He wears a variety of tuxedos and... See, here's the thing about this Joker. This Joker doesn't match up with the other ones, but I really liked this Joker. I don't know why. He just looks kind of like a gangster Dude, or something. As well as a straight jacket police riot gear, and a oh, scaly purple yeah. trench coat, complete with excessive jewelry. Though he's a hardened criminal, this Joker spends most of the film longing for his girlfriend. Harley Quinn. The TV series Gotham features Jerome, a psychopath that is easily taken down. Oh my god, whoa, whoa, whoa who's Jerome? The TV series Gotham features Jerome, a psychopath that is easily taken down, only for his fan base to resurrect him. His face is initially absent. Did they just take this man's face off? I didn't even see this later movie. put back on. His most notable outfits consist of a red circus-inspired tuxedo, as well as a beige suit. Don't tell me this pants. dude's a joker. Sadly, Jerome is once more 
defeated. But his twin, Jeremiah, is brave with laughing venom, which causes him to become pale, dress flamboyantly, and go insane. And after taking a Duncan acid, he is heavily deformed. Oh my gosh, what is this from? I've never seen this. The only strands of hair on his head. Oh my god, who is that? That is no... That's that's scary. At which point he wears Gotham's most jokery outfit yet? Wow, 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 wow. Look at him right now. But due to licensing issues, neither Jeremiah nor Jerome are officially recognized as the Joker. So, moving on. In what? 2019's Joker, Arthur Fleck first dons a frumpy plaid costume, puffy green wig, and clown makeup with red and blue accents for his working clown attire. After shooting three wealthy bullies, he incidentally... Okay, hold on. So those other guys were the Joker, but they couldn't be the Joker because the Warner Brothers said nope. Starts a clown uprising. And who is this? a green dress shirt. This is clearly the Joker, but I ain't never seen nothing and like this as a Joker. Dyes his hair dark green and slightly altered. There we go. So this is the new movie. See, I haven't seen the new movie. Here's his makeup, looking sharp enough to meet his talk show hero. Also, this Joker may be Thomas Wayne's secret love child. Or maybe what? that's just another one of Arthur Fleck's illusions. But the best Joker may arguably be Mark Hamill's animated series version. Wow, maybe that looks like the Joker for real. The four centimeter tall Lego Joker. What the? There's Jokers everywhere. Is this a joke? The evolution of Freddy Krueger animated by Tell It Animated. Freddy Krueger defined 80 slashers. But with so many films under his belt, he was bound to go through some. Hold on. What does that say at the bottom? Thank you, Wes Craven, for haunting our dreams since 1984. Rest in peace. All right, I'm 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 glad I caught that little Changes. detail. From creepy to comedic Ugh. to creepy wow. again. The drawing, they're so good. Go check out Tell It Animated. Subscribe to Let's him. Let's go through his progression. In A Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy's wearing a red and green striped sweater, brown pants, boots, a fashionable fedora, and his signature bladed glove. To avenge his own death, he attacks the teenagers of Elm Street in their dreams and is defeated by being ignored. In the sequel, uh. Freddy's Revenge, his nose is hooked and his- See, he's defeated by being ignored. I wouldn't be able to ignore that man. And who would have thought that? Burn marks, which appear more embellished, extend further down his body. Green stripes are added to the sleeves of his sweatshirt and his pants darken. His eyes are more demonic looking and his blades are physically attached to his hand. Two traits that would not carry over to the other sequels. So hold on, here's my question. If you gotta defeat him by ignoring him, does that mean he can't actually hurt you? Or is it just in your head? This time, Freddy takes control of a young boy's body and pops out and crashes a pool party. Uh, when Freddy gets smooched by the young boy's girlfriend, he uh, turns to Ash. In The Dream Warriors, Freddy's look is consistent with the previous film, but he's shown shirtless for the first time. Oh, that's disgusting! What? Don't show me that crap! There's faces in his belly! Huh. Why is that? Revealing a chest of screaming souls. What? He gets though? beat up by dysfunctional kids in the dream world and is finally oh defeated God. when his human remains get laid to rest. And of course he's coming back because you can't kill something like that so easily. The Dream Master resurrects Freddy with the power of dog pee. He's what? the same Freddy, but- Oh, uh, so dog pee brings Freddy Krueger back to life? What the heck? His glove is slightly updated in color. Freddy neutralizes the kids from the last film, and this Ooh. time he bursts when shown him. So he just destroyed them, all right? So this doesn't make much sense to me. He killed them or destroyed them, whatever he did. He took their soul, put it on his belly. I don't know, but they said he gets defeated by ignoring him. So if he gets defeated by ignoring him, how, if you just like, he's behind me, right? And I'm not paying attention. He can't stab me in my neck, right? But if I look at him, he can stab me in my neck. Huh, interesting. Why she got a mirror His out? own reflection. Oh, Freddy is rebirthed in the dream child Ew. and grows quickly into an older, saggier version of Ew, look Freddy at is that. rebirthed. In That's disgusting. This looks like a, a messed up meatball. In the dream child and grows quickly into an older, saggier version of himself with larger burn marks. He trains a young apprentice in the dream world who unfortunately turns Hold on, what, 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 what was that? burn marks. He trains a young... Here we go. The Freddy system. F is for frightened teens, run their sleep, enter dreams, dice them up, dice their friends, yield their souls. Whoa. Young apprentice in the dream world. Who is this? Wait, 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 who was that? Saggier version of himself with larger burn marks. He trains a young apprentice in the dream world who unfortunately turns on him. And Freddy is a- Ew! He trains a young apprentice I in the dream world again. who unfortunately turns on him. Ew. And Freddy is absorbed by his mother. Freddy's dead, the final nightmare, takes us through Freddy's upbringing as a child then teenager, and finally as a middle-aged serial killer. 
Wait a second. So Freddy, the original one is completely gone. He got a like uh, his mom, something like that. But who this was this an apprentice that was learning, but his skin looks He's normal now, to death, but manages oh. to gain dream demon powers. Physically, Freddy retains the larger burn marks, but isn't quite as saggy. He faces off against huh. his daughter, who blows him- And I'm assuming he went and found the original Freddy shirt, too. Why not, right? ...up once and for all. Wes Craven's new nightmare establishes the previous Freddy as a made-up movie character, and introduces a taller, pale-eyed Freddy demon. This one wears oh. a green hat, trench coat, leather pants, tall- That Freddy right there is so much scarier! The, the the nasty little skin version. He just looks like Deadpool the other a way. Boots, a striped turtleneck, and an organic bladed hand. He attacks the star from the first film, but gets cooked in an oven. In Freddy vs. Jason, you, hand, he, oh. he attacks the star from the first film, but gets cooked. He cooked him in an oven. Cooked in an oven. Oh. In Freddy vs. Jason, we're taken back to the original timeline and shown another version of human Freddy pre-burn. This Freddy's burn marks are darker. His teeth are sharper. His Ooh. pants are lighter and the blades on his glove. Okay, so I've never seen Freddy before the burn marks, before this animation. I'm trying to think and I can't remember it. And I know Jason, it was just Jason, right? Because I've seen this movie, it was a while larger. back though. He raises Jason Voorhees to do his bidding, but gets jealous of his kill count and faces off against him instead. The franchise oh. would be rehashed or, <laughs> uh, whoops, I mean rebooted in 2010 with a shorter and more realistically burned Freddy Krueger. What the... I don't like this Freddy Krueger. It looks weird. Look at his head shape and stuff. It is definitely weird. While creepier looking, he fails to live up to the Freddy we all know and love. Exactly. The evolution of Doctor Strange. I tell it animated. Drop a like. All right, we're going to learn some stuff. the Ancient One to heal himself, becoming a powerful sorcerer. But Doctor Strange evolved on screen? We kind of know this from the movies. to find out. Animated. In his first live-action appearance, psychiatrist Doctor Strange wears a purple bodysuit, excessive jewelry, a black and red cloak, golden arm bracers with a matching belt, and his hair is era-appropriate. This Strange uses an inherited magic ring to ward off an evil Whoa. witch, earning him a new set of blue fatigues. Okay, I did, I've never seen that one. I've never seen that Doctor to ward Strange. Off an evil witch, earning him Unless a new set of blue it. fatigues with an added star emblem and yellow cape. And while this film was meant to kickstart a TV series, it failed to launch. Strange Strange's oh. animated debut incorporates. Oh man, tell it animated knows all of his, his information. His chest symbol knows all of it. Hair, and a comic accurate cloak of levitation with his mystical eye of Agamotto oh, oh, oh. his approach. In his second live that action, that looks kind of cool, like Dracula he wears a almost. Fully blue suit with a yellow lined cape. The studio producing this film lost the rights to use Doctor Strange, so he what? instead goes by Doctor Mordred. This doctor what? is apparently an alien from space who vows to protect Earth from his wizardly nemesis. Is that supposed to be? Animated Who that? series features a beefy strange. He has a oh, purple shirt. Oh, 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 oh. Check out those guns! Beefy strange. He has a purple shirt, yellow gloves, a wider cape collar, and his third eye. Yo, makes what's up with the collar? Premiere in his yeah, earlier. You know what? I just cameos, watched the he... new. Have you guys seen the new Spider? Or, oh my gosh, the new Doctor Strange movie. I just seen that, and well, the eye pops For up. For some reason, looks completely different. Whoa! Lacks his gloves and Whoa. fashions a steel blue shirt and a vertical collar. The somewhat the related color is Hulk crazy. Simplifies his look, adds in short orange gloves and his first televised goatee. This basic comic-like design is also recreated in the Superhero Squad show. In his he solo looks sick anime there. Film, That's one of my Strange favorite looks a black that and I've red seen. overcoat getup and a Ooh. simplified cloak. Although Ooh. in Planet Hulk, his cloak is much more embellished. In I mean, Ultimate how much higher can the thing Avengers get? Assemble, he wears a dark bodysuit, yellow boots, artfully blended gloves, and his collar is more hooked. Not to oh, mention, he has an eyeball he on the, in the lusciously long hair. The whole sister. What? <laughs> Wait a second. Why was he doing that? And then second of all, look at the thing around his head. It is bigger than him. it's going way up here. What is mention, going he on? Also has lusciously long hair. The Hulk sister series brightens up this design and the <laughs> Okay. That thing is crazy. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? In the comments one of the things wild. A look with a ludicrous collar. What? Plus, the this version of him. Yo. There's no way they just it went even. What is that? You can even turn into a giant dream dragon. Marvel oh. Disc War Strange has silver hair, a pointy collar, and added bicep bracers. The MCU Strange wears a blue tunic, 
bulky belt, and has cloth wrapped around his gauntlets and boots. His cloak has a plaid lining and two shoulder clasps. He uses this, a sling. I, I can't get over what I just seen. The collar went stupid out to the side. ...to open up portals and notably houses the Time Infinity Stone inside the Eye of Agamotto, which he uses to thwart a space entity from consuming... Was that... Did he say that's a... That looks like Thanos. Inside the Eye of Agamotto, which he uses to thwart a space entity from cons... Is that an Infinity Stone? ...consuming Earth by annoying him in an unending time loop. This live-action look would inspire his designs in Marvel Future Avengers, Marvel Superhero Adventures, Oh, that guy on the left looks pretty cool. Is that his an Lego Infinity version, Stone? And his 2017 animated parents, which briefly becomes Venomized. Additionally, his Avengers... Mm, Venom Doctor Strange? Animated parents, no way. Which briefly becomes Venomized. Additionally, no. his Avengers Assemble design will be altered to closer match the MCU. In Thor Ragnarok... Wait, 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 what did he say? Okay, what I think I picked up was Venom changed the appearance of Doctor Strange but Doctor Strange looked a little bit different because Venom Avengers was inside of him. will be altered to closer match the MCU. In Thor Ragnarok, Strange now has his classic chest symbol, a redder belt, his cloth threading is more colorful, and he wears old school yellow gloves. Although Infinity War ignores these alterations. Oh. In this film, he teams up with other superheroes to uh, that's a cool look. <laughs> I'm just saying, look at all the heroes the on the screen right now. Thanos. And to save the life of Tony Stark, Strange relinquishes the Time Stone. Oh my gosh, I was so right. I knew it was an Infinity Stone. He said it's a Time Stone. Oh no, I forgot all the stones, like the what they are on the gauntlet. This is horrible. But the yellow one Coming is like the most important Thanos one, right? To dust him and have the universe away. But five years later... Wait, when he snapped his fingers, did that kill Doctor Strange? Later in Endgame, he's undusted and portals his way undusted? back to help... Undusted? Okay, so wait a second. If he undusted himself, then he probably came from a different universe, which was through the multiverse, which then, in turn, means it's not their original Doctor Strange. And if all the other heroes came back, then they are also not the originals. Titan. What if... Correct. ...features an alternative MCU Correct. Strange, as well as a gaunt, purple-suited villain... Holy! Whoa, is this supposed to be the evil one? variation that absorbs numerous beings, including his alternative strange rival, briefly becoming a demonic monster. And there's also a zombie variant. Rival, briefly becoming a demonic... I do not remember a Dr. Strange that looked like that. Like and I just seen the new movie. And there's also a zombie variant. But this one, there was like a zombie, yes, because he brought him back from the dead. In No Way Home, he adds warm loungewear to his attire to combat a draft. Well, this that time, looks strange. Botches good. a forget me spell for Spider Man, accidentally bringing out other wall Well, I, I know this. I know this. Into the MCU and their respective villains. In Multiverse of Madness. That was the Green Goblin, but that, wait, wait, wait. That was supposed to be the Green Goblin. And their respective Throwing that in there. Villains. But that's not the Green Goblin. Look at the shadows to the right. You can see. They have Otto Octavius. There's like a mummy. I can't really tell. There's Green Goblin's got to be in there. In Multiverse of Madness, his chest symbol is back. His gauntlets are leather. He has. He says his chest symbol is back, but I'm looking at it and it just looks like a bunch of stuff. Boots, a simplified belt, and his necklace is more taut. This film also features chest symbol. I thought they were saying like the necklace was the chest symbol. Features a red and black suited Defender Strange with an added ponytail. Who quickly dies. Oh! A blue and silver suited Supreme Strange, but he. Whoa! I've never seen that. Pr that He's Strange. To death for his blue atrocities. A dark, cold, corrupted, sinister Strange with an occasional third eye. Who? Yes, yes. This is the one I've seen. So he's bad in a different universe, and he became bad because he read the book. All right, spoilers. Also, I'm sorry. Doesn't last too long. And in addition, the MCU Strange uses the dark hold to take Old over Defender's the corpse. Acquire hey, this is what I was talking about. He took over the dead body. Flying demon cloak. This adventure finds. Well, I guess that one wasn't the zombie one. The hero protecting a multiverse hopping America Chavez from the Scarlet Witch, and in the end, our OG Strange ah, gains his own third eye. I've seen the movie, and this is exactly how it goes. Videos. Exactly how it goes. And by the way, the movie was super awesome. And I, when I seen earlier the the zombie one, I seen the zombie one, and I was like, oh, that's when he goes brings the dude back from the dead. Turns out there was a zombie one, and then he also brought somebody back from the dead. If you come back from the dead, does that mean you're a zombie? or not i don't i don't know in the comments let me know if that if you come back from the dead you got to be a zombie right <laughs> and also let me know in the comments well have you seen the new uh dr strange movie hero protecting a uh, multiverse hopping america that little girl right there the she does the thing wait opens the multiverse yeah drop a like subscribe down below and i will see you guys in the next video